My name is Caroline Berrybauer and I'm the Outreach Coordinator for the Essex Region Conservation Authority. Um, for the last three years or so, I've also sat on the Caroline Canada Coalition's Board of Directors um, representing the Essex Region Conservation Authority but also uh, representing Conservation Ontario which is uh, the umbrella organization that basically oversees um, all of the other 36 conservation authorities that are across Ontario. Um, so I had an opportunity, or I've had an opportunity over those three years to interact with a lot of the other conservation authorities, and I know a lot of those conservation authorities, like ours, interact with teachers and other educators on a pretty regular, <coughs> excuse me, on a pretty, pretty regular basis. Uh, so when I was aware that uh, some of the staff at Caroline Canada were, were working on this, this education kit, I, I, I knew immediately like 20 people that at least just down our way in the Windsor-Essex region that would be really um, keen to learn more about it and, and keen to use it even, even more importantly. So I'm very happy that you're all uh, part of this uh, webinar, uh, which is kind of new technology for me. but. Um, uh, I'm very happy you're all here, and I think it's going to be very interesting. So uh, I'll leave it at that and turn it back over to Sarah. Thanks, Caroline. So my name's Sarah, and I'm the program manager with Caroline and Canada Coalition. Um, I'll just give you a few um, bits of information before we continue. The first thing is that we are recording this webinar right now. Basically what we're doing is we're recording the audio as well as the slides that we're showing. So if everything works, fingers crossed, when we're done the presentation, we'll be able to edit that and put it up on our YouTube channel so that you can go back and view it a second time or if you have colleagues who might be interested who weren't able to attend the session today, they'll be able to go onto our YouTube channel and we'll be able to view the whole thing there. So, um, like I said before, we can't hear anything that you guys are saying, and the questions that you type in are not being recorded for the purposes of the YouTube um, webinar. The questions that you're writing are being recorded, but that just goes to us so that we have the information so that we can contact you if you have questions that we can't um, get to during the webinar. And uh, when we ask questions, like we'll, we'll have numbers about how many people respond to us and things like that. So yes, the recording will be saved as one entire file and that will be on our YouTube uh, channel. We'll also send an email around giving everyone the link so that they'll know where it is. And then the actual education kit itself will be a separate file. So everyone, or a few people have already figured out how, how to ask questions, so that's great. I'm going to go through the whole presentation right now, which probably will only take about 20 minutes to half an hour, and then we'll try and address the questions at the end of the session, and then anything that we don't get to we'll address later. So hopefully everyone can see my screen right now with our uh, title page here, Carolinian in Canada Species at Risk and Action, Action Education Kit. And I'd like to acknowledge that Caroline in Canada, Canada hired Lauren Selby, who is a teacher and also has her own consulting business, um, EcoRight Environmental and Education Consulting. So we brought Lauren on to help us put this kit together because none of the rest of us on staff are teachers. And that helped us to tie in all the curriculum links and everything to do with the Ontario um, school boards. So hopefully that will be very useful to you as teachers and educators. So here's a bit of an agenda of what I will be speaking about. Um, I wanted to go over a little bit about what the Carolinian Canada Coalition is. For those of you who don't know already, where the zone is found, what our motivation was behind creating this kit. I'll go through a bit of the structure of the kit and what's included. Uh, we'll go through the curriculum links tables so that you can see which courses this ties into directly. I'll go through an example of a few of the different lessons. I'll tell you how you can get a copy of the education kit, and then we'll do a few plugs for our Carolinian Canada membership, um, our pledge program, and then we'll have some time for questions. So here's just um, our overall mission for Carolinian Canada Coalition, protecting the unique nature of southwestern Ontario. And there's some of our uh, native flora and fauna friends on our little flag here. 
And then a little more detailed is our mandate. So you can see that Carolina in Canada is very interested in organizing and participating in environmental projects. And we're also interested in uh, creating educational materials and programs that we can offer to the public. So this ties in really well with our mandate. And for those of you who weren't sure, here's the Carolinian Life Zone. And this map is showing the natural cores and connections in Carolinian Canada. So you can see that the dark green areas are the core areas. And um, you can see that we have our three sand spits at Long Point, Rondo, and Point Teeley, which have a lot of natural cover. You'll see that some of the counties have less natural cover than others, but um, it gives you a good idea of the major cities that are located in this area and gives you a bit of a geographical perspective. So why did we want to create this kit? Well, we wanted to have a local resource that connects students to nature in their own community. So often when we say species at risk, the thing that pops into people's mind are the big megafauna like pandas, gorillas, tigers, which are fantastic animals that the kids should know about. But we also have a lot of species at risk that are found here in southwestern Ontario, things like monarch butterflies, flying squirrels, five-lined skinks. So when we're teaching the kids about nature, and when we're talking about species at risk and how to help endangered species, we want to make sure that while we're teaching them about the global perspective, we're also focusing on the local perspective. And we had been told by teachers that, that there weren't really any good local um, kits about endangered species that were applicable to southwestern Ontario. So we found that there was a bit of a gap there and thought that we would be able to provide some materials and resources. Okay, I just see a question coming in. Can I ask people to raise their hands if the slides aren't changing? So can you raise your hand if you are not seeing a slide right now with pretty animals on it? Okay, nobody's raising their hand, so I think that means that everyone is seen there. Okay, continuing. So another reason that we wanted to have the kit is that the Carolinian region is in trouble. Uh, there are a lot of species at risk in this area. When you saw the map, Carolinian Canada represents less than 1% of Canada's land area, but is home to over a quarter of Canada's population. So it's an incredibly um, densely populated area, home to a third of Canada's species at risk. So if you're going to talk about species at risk in Canada, this is the place to do it. We also saw from the green specks on the map that it has the lowest coverage of parks and protected natural areas as a percentage of land mass in the country. So we don't have any of the huge provincial parks like we have in northern Ontario. We do have a lot of scattered smaller parks, but it's not the same when it comes to um, migration corridors and, and wide ranging species. And we find that when we talk to a lot of people, they really don't know much about the habitat conditions where they live. So this resource is trying to address that. And we also want to make sure that um, it's not doom and gloom like a lot of conservation things can be. We want to inspire the students. We want to give them opportunities to take home these messages and give them uh, ways that they can actually get out there and help. So I'm sure this book is familiar to a lot of you. Um, raise your hand if you've read The Last Child in the Woods by Richard Louvre. Yeah, numbers going up. It's an excellent book, and he's the one who coined the term nature deficit disorder. So um, basically, as a result of our changing recreation habits, a lot of people living in urban environments, limited access to parks and natural areas, as well as all of us spending a lot more time on computers, um, sort of an overall fear that a lot of parents have about letting their kids play outside, kids aren't really connected to nature the same way that they have been in previous generations. So um, that's really important when we think about the future of conservation. There's a quote from Robert Bateman here, if you can't name the things, how can you love them? And if you don't love them, then you're not going to care a hoot about protecting them or voting for issues that would protect them. So we really need to start at a young age to get kids uh, knowledgeable about stewardship and species at risk and conservation issues and give them uh, ways that they can work with these issues. 
So these are sort of the goals of the education, education kit overall. We want to connect students with their local environment. We want to give them ideas and tools to make long-lasting changes in their school, their home, and their community. We want to challenge students to think about how they can be part of the solution instead of focusing just on the problem, empower students to care for the vulnerable species in their local area, and give them new perspective and ideas towards achieving ecological sustainability and biodiversity. So we wanted to make sure when we made the kit, um, we weren't just giving more information because obviously people can go onto our website and they can download you know, our, our general fact sheets, but we wanted to give tools for action. We wanted to give information that students can take and use in their school, in their homes, in their communities. Because when we think about it, these students are the future landowners, they're the future decision makers, they're the future politicians. Uh, so we want to instill all this behavior in them. So this is just a quick summary of what it is that we provide in the education kit. Um, but I have a little more detail on the next slide, so I'll flip to that. So all of, the, um, all of the sections in the kit have these lesson plans, which are tied into the Ontario curriculum. I'll show you one of the curriculum links tables in a minute so that you can see how that works. Um, we have sort of the basic lesson plan, and then we have extension and opportunities which um, might be better suited for something like a class trip or something that the parents can do with the students if you're not able to do it within the classroom. We have links to environmental resources that you can use so that you're not developing so stuff from scratch when it already exists. And we also provide background information on the Carolinian Canada Coalition and Carolinian Canada, um, including ecological significance, the types of habitats, and what sort of factors are leading it to um, to becoming a threatened eco-region. So when we were developing the kit, we based it on this fact sheet that we had produced a few years ago called Seven Steps for Seven Generations, Leaving a Legacy for Wild and Human Communities. And I know that the text is quite small on the computer right now, but um, the big words there, explore, share, vision, save, steward, seed, and spread, are sort of the concepts that we are working on um, to promote with the kit. So we designed the kit around these seven different modules, and within each of the seven modules, we have several different lessons. So the seven steps for seven generations is included with the uh, education kit. So this uh, hopefully makes it a little bigger. And with this round, we've been able to develop the first three modules in detail. And at the moment, we're looking for new funding sources to um, develop the, the last four. So the, the first three are standalone. We can, we can send those out to people, and we can get them used. But we do have plans to uh, increase the number of lessons available. So within each of the seven modules, we have three lessons and two extensions for further learning. Each of those comes with the curriculum links table. And here you can see which um, specific science courses the curriculum links table refers to. So grade six, science and technology, um, grade seven, grade nine. And then um, there's also a few other ones that meet some of the expectations of these subject areas, but we don't necessarily meet all of the expectations. But obviously, um, any teacher for any class could use the kit and um, you know, can go through and pick out what resources are useful to them and use those as standalone. So now I'll go through um, one of the modules just to show you the type of information that we have available for all of the lessons. Um, for each module, like I said, we have three lessons and two extensions. We'll always have a bit of background information. So obviously module one is kind of the first one that you would want to cover because it gives a bit of um, explanation as to what is the Carolinian life zone, what are species at risk, um, what are some of the different plant and animal species that you would find in the Carolinian life zone. And then as you move on to the other modules, they will build on top of those ones. So here is an example of the curriculum links table. 
So um, when Lauren designed the kit, she obviously went through the science curriculum, and for each of the classes that it applies to, we go through the different expectations that the kids are supposed to learn from any particular lesson, and then we'll point out which one of the specific lessons within the module meets those. So for the first one, grade six science and technology, understanding life systems, biodiversity, the expectation is assess human impacts on biodiversity and identify ways of preserving biodiversity. So the lessons on traveling locally and wanted alive will meet those ones. So we've got that included for each of the lessons. So within lesson one, travel locally, we'll give a summary of the lesson that we are about to do with the students. We'll give information on how many classes it will take. So usually they're sort of one class, two classes. Some of them are longer term and you'll want to do them over the course of a few weeks. It sort of depends on uh, what it is that you're teaching from that, the type of projects that are associated with it. We'll give the different objectives, like students will communicate information on the care learning life zone and its significance through written work, create a media forum for a specific audience and purpose, examine and learn persuasive techniques to communicate their research and findings. Then we'll tell you which materials we've provided or which ones you need to find yourself. So for the first lesson, um, we have created a PowerPoint presentation about Carolinian in Canada, so we'll, we'll supply that along with the education kit itself. So you're not having to go and do a lot of background research yourself. Uh, we're not expecting that you're all ecologists, but um, we're providing the information in sort of an easy to use fashion that you can then modify to the purposes of your own class. We have a worksheet that's included in this one, and then uh, we recommend that you get uh, some travel brochures to demonstrate to the kids sort of what it is that they're trying to create in this one, because basically in this they're trying to create a travel brochure to promote the Carolinian life zone, so they would want to choose certain species that they want to highlight or certain habitat types that they want to highlight. And uh, then we've got a little blurb with the teacher information, um, or the teacher background, which would also be included in the presentation that we provide you with. So then we'll have the procedure explaining to you exactly what steps you need to take, uh, view the presentation with your students, explain to them that they're developing a travel brochure for the Carolinian Life Zone, hand out the samples, hand out the worksheet, and um, then eventually you're going to want to post the brochures in a high traffic area so that if you are the only teacher in the school who's currently using the education kit, all the other teachers will say, wow, what's that fabulous resource that we now want to use as well? And hopefully uh, raise a little awareness and the, with the rest of the students in the school. There's a sample of the worksheets. I know these are kind of small. I just tried to give you a bit of an idea of how we've laid everything out. And uh, this one has the travel brochure layout, the content, and how the students are supposed to go through the process of doing their research to create their own. And then once the kids sort of have the basic knowledge of the Carolinian Life Zone through their first activity, these are the types of extensions that they can do. So the first extension is called Touring Naturally, where we encourage people to get out and experience the Carolinian Life Zone. So we provide information on the Carolinian Canada Signature Sites, which are sites that um, were identified back in 1984, so probably well before most of your students were born. And we, um, we have booklets that promote this. We have promotions on our website where people can get more information about them. But they're really excellent representations of the Carolinian ecosystems. So those are areas that chances are no matter where you are in the Carolinian life zone, a few of these are close to you. So if you do have the opportunity to go on a class trip, these are nearby. Um, we also provide information about all the provincial parks and conservation areas in the region. Obviously a lot of the conservation areas have their own educational programming, but this might be able to enhance it or um, give you some ideas of what you might want to do when you do go on trips there. A lot of the regions do have environmental education centers as well. For example, the Thames Valley District School Board um, is working on a really great Carolinian Life Zone exhibit right now at the Jaffa Environmental Education Center. So um, there are lots of resources within the school board that you can use. 
And then we're really hoping that this kit will be an interactive resource so that if people are visiting neat places, we're really hoping to hear their stories or maybe get people to upload stuff to our Facebook page or send us emails or um, link to our website so that we know sort of which resources are being used, which ones people are most interested in, and, and uh, how to the extent that people are actually using the kit. Uh, the second extension sort of goes into more detail about what you can bring along with you when you're visiting these natural areas and different types of activities that you can do. Um, so suggesting to bring binoculars and field guides and other materials to help you get a little more out of your visit to the natural areas. To stop in at the different visitor centers. Obviously these places have a wealth of material that you want to tap into. And then we also have a list of uh, special events that happen throughout the year. So there's lots of things like uh, different bird migrations, uh, like wings of spring, the rapture migrations at Hot Cliff, the monarch migrations that happen across the zone are really great things that you know you have a basic timeline that it happens the same time every year so you can plan your lessons around that and we try and provide uh, a number of those different types of events that people can go to. And we also give sort of best practices as to what people should uh, be keeping in mind when they're visiting the natural areas. Obviously, you know, it's awesome to run into the forest and start lifting up logs and looking for salamanders, but that might not be the best thing for the animals and plants that you're looking for. So um, just getting people familiar, because some of the kids may not be used to going to parks. Here's a second example of one of the lessons. This one's called Wanted Alive. And we have some posters that I'll show you in a few slides that Caroline in Canada designed, um, sort of the old-timey Western wanted posters. But here we talk about different species at risk. So we have a few samples of those that are included in the kit. And the kids can look at those as examples. And then they can pick different species at risk that they want to highlight on their poster. And then they can give information about the species. So again, it's got the summary, the duration of how long this will take, the different objectives of the lessons, the materials that we provide with the kit, and the background information for teachers. And then here's an example of the wanted posters. So on this one, this one um, was specific to Norfolk County. And we focused on the red-headed woodpecker, burn owl, gray rat snake, and American badger. So we have the common name of the species, nice colorful photo, um, the scientific name, the species at risk status, some information about it, some fun little did you know, um, how to help information. And then there's also the contact information. Um, for different recovery team members. So all of the species at risk do have things like recovery strategies that are a little, uh, <laughs> little high level for the students to be looking at. But the MNR has good websites. Um, the Royal Ontario Museum has a good species at risk website. We can provide lists of species at risk in your area that the kids might want to focus on. And then they can obviously do research online or in books in order to get the information about their species. So again, you know, the kids can focus on this. They can do it within the class, and then they can post them in the classroom. They can post them somewhere else in the school in order to raise awareness with their classmates. And then here's another example of a lesson plan. Uh, lesson six is speak out. So throughout the semester term, students will work to get a speaker from a local conservation organization to come to their class. They'll work in pairs or small groups to organize the meeting with a rep representative from an organization to share information about their efforts through the recovery and protection of species at risk. Then the class will set a schedule to ensure weekly or bi-monthly speakers that are attending their class. So this is sort of a longer term project that you could do throughout the semester and it helps to get sort of outside expertise coming in and talking to the students. So we give some links to different organizations that we work with through Carolyn in Canada. You can get the kids to research some of the local interest groups in their region, like nature clubs, conservation authorities, land trusts, and then you can assign um, the groups 
so you can give the kids the information as to what sort of information they should be collecting from the speakers, gives them a little bit of responsibility to contact different people, to set up an event, to um, track all the information that they need, to learn how to use audiovisual equipment for the presentation. <laughs> so we've included the worksheets um, here so that you can see the type of information that they would need to get. So those are just a few of the examples of the lesson plans that we have in the kit. Um, like I said, there's the seven modules. We've developed the first three right now, and we're hoping to get the second part done soon. Um, but these are standalone right now, so it's not like you're missing out on anything until we get the rest of the kit together. At this stage, we're really interested in just getting it out there, getting it out there to the schools, to the teachers, and having you tell us, is this a valuable resource? When we go to make the second half of the kit, what should we keep? What should we do differently? Um, what other information would be useful to you as educators? And uh, we're always interested in getting feedback. So my email address is there on the screen, projects at carolinian.org, or you can contact any of us through the website at www.carolinian.org. So if you have other people who weren't able to attend the webinar today and they have questions about it, they can get in touch with me, or if they have questions on how to get it, they can get in touch with me as well. So we have all of your contact information from when you registered for the webinar. So I'm assuming that most of you are interested in seeing the kit. We don't have it up on our website yet. We're working on getting that set up. But at this stage, I can actually email information to people. So I will send an email around um, asking people if they're interested in getting the kit. You can let me know and then we can start sending it around. I have it set up that it's available as one large PDF file that you can download or broken down into modules. So I can send it to you either way, um, however you feel that it would be most useful to you. So we're not charging anything for this kit. It is an electronic resource. We're not planning on printing hard copies of it at this point. But um, if your school is in the position, we'd always appreciate a donation to Carolinian Canada so that we can fund the development of the second half of the kit. We have lots of different levels of membership. Um, as an individual, you can join for $20 a year. Um, as an organization, $50 a year, or we have sort of our varying levels of supporters. So I know budgets are tight, so we certainly don't expect that, but it would be really great. Um, it's also great if you guys sign up for our Eco News newsletter because that goes out on a monthly basis. We talk about the different projects that we're working on. We'll have updates about the kit. We have updates about events that happen all across the Carolinian zone. So it's a really good way for you to, to, um, to know about different events that are coming up that you might be able to link the lesson plans into. One of the other programs that we're working on right now with Carolinian Canada is we're trying to track habitat-friendly actions across the zone. So we know that a lot of people are doing a lot of great things for the environment right now, but people aren't necessarily getting recognized for that. So what we're doing is we're asking people to take a pledge to tell us when they are taking these habitat actions, and we're tracking that information so that we can say, over the last year, we've had over 500 people give us examples of what they're doing to help earn endangered species across the zone. So we actually have a little poll today that Tristan can put up for us while I'm talking. <laughs> and we're asking if you can pledge that you will teach your students about um, the Carolinian life zone, about rare and endangered species. So you guys should see something on your screen right now and you can select yes you will take this pledge or no you won't and I'm not holding you to it we're just curious to see people's level of interest about these sort of things. So that's about all I wanted to talk about so I think now we will open it up to questions and we can take questions for about 20 minutes. Oh, it looks like the poll got cut off. So some of you may or may not have been able to uh, log into that, but I don't know that we can go back into it again. But we do have our, our pledge website, so you guys can always check out our website and can look at some of the pledges that you can take there.
Okay, now I'm being told the poll is still up. Can you guys raise your hands once you've finished with the poll? All right, about half the people are done with that. So I'm going to start scrolling through the questions for a second. And if you do have any questions, you can just type them into the box. Okay, I'm seeing one question. Are there any connections to geography at the high school level? So I'm going to go back um, through my slides and I'll show you again the specific courses that we have the curriculum links tables for. Just bear with me for a minute. Oops, that's not the slide I wanted. Sorry, getting used to new technology. And you're all really quiet. Caroline, do you want to come back on and let me know if any other questions are coming through? There we go. So those are the uh, specific courses that we have the ties for the curriculum linked tables. And then there's the uh, geography courses that it's applicable to as well. Okay, any connections to younger grades, i.e. habitats and communities, characteristics and needs? Um, not as much. I think that there still is information that you can pull from the education kit, but um, I, I think that for the most part, it's sort of the older grades that it's focusing specifically on, but there's certainly, um, you can certainly still use the Carolyn in Canada presentation to give the kids a sense of what sort of animals we find in this area. And there is some information in there about the different types of habitats that are found in the Carolinian zone. So we go through the different Carolinian forests, uh, wetlands, prairies, that sort of information as well. So yes, that is in there. Ooh, do we have leaf photos or samples to assist with identifying native species? No, I don't think that we do, but that's a good idea and I like that. And uh, maybe in the second half of the kit, that's something that we would be able to include. So thank you for that one. Um, there are a few good books out there. There is a book that is about trees of the Carolinian life zone. So it's got really good information um, for the leaves and the barks and the twigs and everything that uh, the kids might find useful. There's a really great Trees of Canada hardcover book that your school might have in the library, and there's another uh, Trees of Ontario book that would provide that sort of information. So that's definitely something, um, that's the type of feedback that we would like so that we know what sort of resources teachers are interested in having in the second half of the kit. 
Uh, would you consider asking the school boards to become sponsors? Finding cash at the school level is usually difficult. That's a great idea. <laughs> we would love that. Um, obviously, we're very well aware that finding cash is very difficult, um, and we certainly don't expect the teachers to take that on themselves. Um, we would certainly consider contacting the school boards um, if we got feedback from teachers that they thought that this was a useful resource, that would definitely give us um, good reason to contact the board. So thanks for that suggestion. And yes, you guys are quiet because I do have you muted. I know. It's very weird. I feel like I'm talking to myself right now. So hopefully some of you are still here. Uh, can I let you know of a site that I teach at? Yes, Kim, you can always let us know. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys have any um, ideas of other sites that we can uh, recommend that people take their classes to, we would definitely appreciate that sort of information because we're, we're not necessarily as familiar with your local areas as you are, so that would be great. Uh, this is being shared with outdoor education centers. Yes, we're willing to share this resource with anyone who asks, so um, we sent it kind of out to teachers because we figured it would be most appropriate for them. Um, some of the lessons might not work as well for something like a camp where you're just seeing the kids for a few hours on a one-off basis, but for anyone who's interested, we will definitely um, be happy to share this resource with them. Oh, I figured we'd get this question at one point. Do you have resources for French immersion classes? No, we don't at this point. Um, I'm not sure if that's something that we'll be able to do down the road or not, um, but we'll certainly keep that in mind. Are those wanted posters available as PDFs on the website? Yes, I believe they are. Um, we do have a resources section on our website where we do have fact sheets that you can download. And I think those are all up there, but they'll also be included when we send out the entire kit. Any touchables to assist in better connections to the topics? Unfortunately not. Um, we're not even printing out paper copies of the kit, but um, that's certainly something that would enhance. Um, but again, you know, it's hard to find money from the school boards. It's hard for us to find resources for something that as well. But um, that would definitely be an excellent um, opportunity is to take the kids out to collect different seeds and leaves. Um, of the plants that you're talking about. Uh, the Boreal Scientific Kit has leaf samples. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we're not there yet. Let's see what else. Can I purchase the kit, not the e-download? No, because we haven't actually printed any copies ourselves right now. So at this stage, it's still just a downloadable um, version. When we have the complete seven module kit, if there's a lot of interest from people to actually have a printed version and we can find funding for printing, then that's something we'll certainly consider. Um, but right now at this stage, it's only electronic. But you guys are welcome to print it yourselves. Okay, may have missed this point, but how do I actually get the kit? Okay, so at this stage, I'm going to send around a follow-up email to everyone who registered for the um, webinar. And I will plan to send the kit or the links to the kit to everyone on the webinar right now. If you know people who are interested in getting it, have them send me an email. Um, at this point, I prefer sending it out to people rather than having you send it to people just so I can track numbers to know how many um, how many kits are out there and also so that we can follow up with people later to ask if they're actually finding it useful, um, if they have any recommendations for us. So again, my email is projects at carolinian.org or you can go to the website and uh, then we will send it to you. Oh, now a bunch of questions are coming in. <laughs> Ah, is the Roos Valley considered to be the most eastern portion of the Carolinian forest? And if so, are you excited uh, about it becoming a national park? Yes. <laughs> a lot of people think that um, Toronto is too far east or too far north or something, but that is still within the Carolinian life zone. And yeah, very excited about that. Um, we are hoping that we'll do some talks in that region this year. For anyone who's interested, our annual general meeting is actually going to be May 23rd and May 24th at Humber College. I'm sure most of you will be teaching at that point, but um, yeah, getting us a little bit to the eastern edge of the Carolinian Life Zone.
And yes, yeah, someone's saying, depending on where you take students, you may not be allowed to take leave, et cetera, with them. Yes, that is true. Pictures are a great idea, and you certainly don't want to take samples of species at risk from where you're going. But um, yeah, <laughs> thank you for pointing that out. Um, how available are you for school visits? Unfortunately, we do have a very small staff at the Carolinian Canada Coalition, so we're not very available for school visits. Um, maybe in the future, that is something that we might be able to do depending on the funding that we get for different types of projects. But you can always email us to ask for recommendations about areas to go to or different material to cover. And hopefully once you have a look through the entire kit, it'll give you a lot of ideas of things that you can do yourself. Hey, Sarah, can you hear yes, me? I Hi. Can. Sorry, I'm still here. I just wanted <laughs> to jump in um, just regarding um, school visits and things like that. Um, for, for most folks across the region and certainly here in Essex County, if any of you teachers have uh, are familiar with your local conservation authority. Um, many of them, and certainly us down here in Winter Essex County, we do have school programs um, and, and education specialists that go into schools and do these programs. Uh, I actually see one of our staff on the, uh, on the webinar, so um, you know, that is something that we can look at to possibly deliver this type of program if teachers were interested. It's uh, definitely something we can look at um, internally and, and kind of develop further. Yeah, great point. And someone else just mentioned that there are a lot of naturalist clubs and they're a fantastic resource. Just so much knowledge and really local knowledge as well. So um, as I mentioned during one of the lesson plans, that is a recommendation, is to research the different types of groups that are, exist already in your area and use them as a resource to get them to come into the classroom to talk to the students. And yeah, Kim's just saying a lot of them have species at risk specific programs, for sure, and a lot of the parks do as well. <laughs> and yeah, filled with retirees who love to talk, that is for sure true, and they're, they're just such a fantastic resource. So you'll, you should find that, you know, once you start looking into it, there's a lot of resources in your own community. We'd love to go all, I'd love to go all over the place and just go, you know, <laughs> talk to people all day. I, I, sorry, I'm going to jump in again because I just feel like I have to do a shout out to uh, Andrew and Nancy and Jacqueline. <laughs> They're all saying hi on the uh, questions and I don't know how to respond to that, but I'll just respond verbally. So it's nice. Oh, and they're saying how great you are, Caroline. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so glad that they were able to take part in this today. This is, uh, this is really this is cutting edge as far as I'm concerned. But. Uh, back to the question, sorry. <laughs> this is still a pretty new technology for us. This is only the third webinar that we've done. Um, so I'm really pleased that you guys all showed up and that you've listened to me for the past 40 minutes. And uh, I hope that you find this a good resource. If you know a lot of people who weren't able to make it today who, but who think this sort of um, webinar would be useful to them, we could definitely consider doing this on another date now that we've got all the information. So um, certainly something to keep in mind. And yes, Ontario Nature has um, links for the different nature clubs in the area. The Land Trust organization has information for them. So there's lots of di different resources that we do mention in the kit as to uh, how you can get in touch with different people. Oh yeah, we're just being asked. Uh, we have 20 people listening in right now. We had over 40 people registered, but I'm sure uh, things come up and, and not everyone's able to make it. But still, to get 20 people out is really, really great. So thank you, everyone. Um, oh, someone's sending a link. Let me just look. Biodiversity link for downloadable lesson plans, games, DVD, present. Oh, great. Um, so if you go to the Lower Thames Valley Conservation Authority website, there is a biodiversity unit. So thank you, Jerry. That's very useful. I will send that around when we send the follow-up email to the webinar. So thanks. OK, well, I feel like I have talked a lot. Um, and the questions seem to be slowing down. So hopefully we've managed to sort of touch base with everyone on the questions that they do have. 
like I said, we will let everyone know when we get the uh, recording up on our YouTube channel, and that's when we'll send all the follow-up information. Um, but if you are interested, please feel free to send me an email to ask any questions that you do have, or to you know give us praise so that we do types of things like this again. Um, and please check out the Carolina Canyon Coalition website. Like I mentioned, uh, if you want to sign up for our Eco News, it's a great way to keep connected to events that are going on all across the zone um, and in your own region. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you, Sarah, for putting this on. And thanks, everyone, for again, for joining us. And uh, I hope we do this again real soon, because I've got a really fancy headset now that just can't stay in the box. So. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> thanks, okay. everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>